Hello, my name is Sally Ibbotson and I'm a Shiatsu practitioner and a Qigong teacher. And I'd like to say a little bit about the relationship between the two and also uh, show you a Qigong exercise called Standing Like a Tree, um, which is probably the starting posture for most martial arts and most physical movements that are grounded in Chinese medicine. So with shiatsu, some people who come for shiatsu regularly want to do something that enhances their energy in between the, uh, the treatments. So they receive the benefits, they're sleeping better, their pain is maybe reduced, uh, they're feeling better about life, having taken space for themselves. But they want to extend that good feeling, that feeling of well-being, until the next treatment. And so I often recommend specific qigong. However, a very general one uh, is standing like a tree. And so uh, let's um, get into the position and then I'll talk some more about it. So the first thing is to take the feet parallel and that is the outside edges of the feet. So it's as if the outside edges are running along rail tracks and that might feel slightly pigeon-toed. The next thing to do is to imagine that you have a football between your knees or something similar, maybe a, a watermelon or something like that. Um, but it's slightly pushing your knees apart, so there's a slight feeling of the feet um, moving onto the outside edges and of the knees, uh, and the knees are going out in that direction. To compensate for that, we press the big toes into the floor or the ground if you're standing outside. So the big toes are slightly pressed into the ground. Now what you're doing here is you're activating points in the feet, in the sole of the feet, specifically kidney one, which is called bubbling spring, and the beginning of the stomach meridian, which runs up the whole of the front of the body. The next thing to do is to tilt your pelvis, and I'm going to stand sideways to show you this. And so this can be called engage your core or tilt your pelvis. Um, but the way I describe it is to get into a pose a little bit like a gunslinger. So your pelvis is tilted like that. Your tail is tucked under if you like. Um, so this is uh, the position. And then you, you're less exaggerated. So you take it back to a position where you perhaps can hold longer or are comfortable. So a slightly tilted pelvis is what we want. From there you might feel that your spine can naturally elongate up and to enhance that there's a feeling of the top of the head moving towards the ceiling or the sky as if somebody was pulling you up from a point at the top of your head towards the ceiling or sky. Make sure, and again I'll turn sideways to show you, that in doing that you haven't tilted your head and closed off the back of the neck, so slightly tilt your chin down, if anything, the top of your head towards the ceiling or sky and the back of the neck open. We then take away our arms from the side of the body just to create a little bit of a space and you could have the image of a golf ball in each armpit, so there's a slight space between your arms and the sides of your body. Your shoulders are relaxed as far as possible and they probably will relax after a while in this position. So let's talk about why we get into this position. So the planet in Chinese medicine, the earth, the planet, is always giving us our foundation, foundation energy. It's always coming in through the soles of our feet and, through, and hopefully through our body. If we stand in a particular position like this, very open, so the, the, the lumbar spine is open because we've tilted the pelvis. The spine is therefore elongated. The knees are soft, by the way, so the knees are not straight and um, extended. They're slightly soft, not bent, but slightly soft. So they're open. And we've created this uh, position in our feet and ankles where we're activating particularly that kidney one point in the base of the, the foot, the sole of the foot, which is um, very, that's what it does really, it attracts earthy energy or chi. This chi that we're attracting, the earthy energy, it's a little bit like we are, um, we're lost without it in a way. Uh, it's as if we are trees and if we didn't have our roots in the earth then our branches couldn't flourish. We wouldn't produce fruit, etc, etc. This is our foundation energy. And what we're doing here is we're opening to that. 
So rather than be locked and in, uh, on our computers, etc., we are opening in a very simple way to letting the chi flow. And it does flow fairly slowly. So you know this is a, something to be done for at least two or three minutes. And some people do it for about 20 minutes. Just standing like this is going to encourage chi to move around your body. And if you've had a shiatsu uh, treatment, that's what's happening anyway. So we want to carry that on as long as possible. So the chi, the earthy chi can get to all parts, um, healing, bringing movement, bringing mobility, and hopefully releasing your discomfort. Earth chi is very calming. It's of the yin quality. Yin is restful, calming, peaceful. This is a good thing to do if you've been working on the computer or hunched over in some way. It's also a very good thing to do if you want to connect the lower body with the upper body. So if there's some um, discomfort or blockage around the waist or the kidney area or the pelvic girdle, this is a good way to stand in order to let the chi move throughout. The idea is that everything is soft, so although you're in a position, everything is soft. So as you're standing like this, as I said earlier, it might feel slightly awkward. So you may feel tingling, burning. You may even feel a little bit of pain. Um, if you're in great pain, please stop. Just go up to the limit of your pain and then stop and do something else. But if you can tolerate things like pins and needles, tingling, burning, that is the chi addressing uh, some blockage in the body. Maybe, but if it becomes too much of a thing, move out. So we're just standing, we're following our normal breath, and you can use this, obviously, as a meditation. Keep checking your posture. Keep refining it. So now, looking at the feet, am I on equal balance between my heels and my toes? Or am I tipping forward slightly, or slightly back? So rock from the heels, weight on the heels to weight on the toes. Find the midpoint there. So we're going to lift the arms. So this will slightly change our center of gravity into a position where it's as if we are wrapping our arms around a tree. And I'd like you to imagine that your arms are held up by a ball of energy that's around about here. So there's no effort on your part, or very little effort on your part to keep your hands up. They, and your arms up, they are resting on a ball of chi. Now, the challenge here is to keep the integrity of your posture in this changed center of gravity. So check through once more, feet parallel, big toes slightly pressing down, Football between your knees, pelvic tilt, elongated spine, head towards the sky. And that's your meditation, keeping running through the body, focusing on the feet all the way through, right the way up to the head. And it's said that when you focus on part of your body, chi goes there. So by this constant checking, feet, knees, pelvis, spine, arms, we're encouraging chi to come up and through the body. Healing, moving, rebalancing. I'm just going to turn sideways for a moment. So one of the challenges with bringing the arms up is that we can go like this, or we can, as if we're carrying a load, we can increase the lumbar curve, which closes us up here. So your challenge is to keep the integrity of that posture, weight equally balanced between toes and heels, knees soft, pelvic tilt, spine elongated, Resting your arms on a ball of chi. So you may actually, it's a little bit like a, a wobble board. You might need to keep very, very subtle movements, keep rebalancing yourself. 
So, for example, I've shifted to my heels now, so I'm shifting back to my toes, which you probably can't see, but there's this internal focus. What do I need to do now? Eventually, at some point, your arms will start aching. The back of your shoulders might start aching. That's fine. We can build up stamina and strength and chi strength by staying here and going a little bit with that and through it. But if it's becoming intolerable, please take your arms down. You may feel pins and needles, especially on the little finger side of the arm here. Again, that's fine unless you feel it's intolerable. You may feel irritated. In fact, you probably will after a while feel irritated. Attempt to move through your irritation and see what comes after that. Don't ignore it, but look at it fully and see what comes after that. You may feel pressed for time, distracted. Move through it just a little bit, a little bit more every day. Start with two minutes, build up to two and a half, to three, and so on. So with the eyes, they're gently focused, soft, so they're not staring, nor are they closed. You can lower your eyelids, but keep your eyes slightly open. And I recommend that you do this posture whenever you have to stand. For example, you're standing waiting for a bus, or even standing on a train that's moving. That's a really good way. Obviously, you wouldn't have your hands up. But just the starting position here, any time that you're standing, even standing talking to somebody, often you, it feel, might feel quite weird to you, but it's not really visible that you're doing something uh, extraordinary to somebody else. So that's a good opportunity. If you're waiting for the kettle to boil, if you're brushing your teeth, if you're doing something on a worktop, if you're working at a computer, take some moments to stand and work in this position. Um, build it into your daily life. The best, best way to do it is to designate some time each day to doing this. And from this we can do a number of Qigong forms. And so you can see my other videos where I go in from this starting position into many other Qigong forms. Happy standing like a tree. Thank you.